Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Daily Mark Report brought to you by Mike Bjork. Today is Thursday, August 15th here. Uh, we got a lot to cover today, so this might be a little bit long uh, video. My apologies, but we got a lot of data being dumped into today's uh, economic calendar here. So we got about three pages of this, so we'll just jump right into it. We'll start off with the weekly jobless claims as we have every Thursday. Uh, last week, we had 211,000 uh, people reporting for unemployment for the previous week. Forecast for con this one was supposed to be a slight uptick to 212,000. However, it did come in a little higher than expected at 220,000 uh, people applying for unemployment for the first time uh, for last week. So a little bit higher than expectations, but uh, again, when you look at the overall scope of things, it's actually pretty still low numbers here that we're seeing here. Now, next on the docket is the uh, retail sales for the month of July. In June, we had a 0.3% month-over-month increase. Uh, forecast were coming from June to J July to a 0.3% increase. However, that jumped up quite a bit to 0.7%. Now, when you take up big ticket items like autos that have large numbers that kind of obscure the numbers a little bit, we, it, we had the same thing in uh, June, month-over-month at 0.3%. However, they're expecting a 0.5%. In uh, June to July, it jumped up even further to 1%. So this was a pretty strong number here, obviously, and probably got a big, a bigger spike in, uh, you know, uh, with Amazon having their Prime Day in July, and then you had some other competitors trying to kind of keep up with them by doing some specials as well. Now to move along here, we got the uh, numbers here for Q2 for productivity. Uh, as you can see here, it dropped a little bit. So the previous reporting was at 3.4%. Forecast coming for a lower number at 1.7, a little bit better than expectations. However, uh, still lower than the previous uh, reporting at 3.4 to 2.3%. Uh, we also got labor unit costs. So in the previous reporting, it dropped 1.6%. However, uh, forecast coming for 2.5%, and it came in pretty close expectation at 2.4%. So we're starting to see a little bit of uptick in labor costs. Now, the labor market, as we had indicated, has been relatively strong and one of the reasons that people we haven't had a high unemployment is people want to hold on to employees because it's hard to find other people to fill those positions so this is one why reason why one reason to keep their employees is the, uh, giving them raises and paying them a little bit more money to stay in uh, the positions so uh, this is why we're starting to see uh, you know higher salaries higher income uh, people are making more money which is good for everybody here now for some manufacturing data here, we got the Empire State Index. This is manufacturing in the New York region. So we had a slight uptick. As you can see in July, it was up 4.3, and it had a slight uptick to uh, 4.8, so point, half, half a point. And then we got uh, manufacturing in the Philadelphia region with the Philly Fed Index. That was a 21.8 in uh, July. However, it did dip a little bit down to 16.8. So on these two indexes, anything below zero is contraction. Anything above is expansion. So it was obviously pretty good in Philadelphia, even with these uh, high numbers, even though it dipped a little bit. But it was, as you can see, these pretty high compared to uh, New York here. And also production, we see, a, uh, unfortunately, a drop here. We've been seeing this slowing down at some point. So as you can see, in June, it was uh, up 0.2%. Forecast con for a 0.2% increase in July uh, for industrial production. However, it contracted and pulled back at 0.2%. We also got capacity utilization. That has, as you can see, uh, we were at 77.8. We're expected to rise slightly or keep pretty close to where we were at 77.9, and it dropped slightly to 77.5. Now, business and inventories, uh, we can see businesses uh, not investing as much as uh, they you know, we would expect so from May to June it had a 0.3 percent increase however in I'm sorry uh, in May uh, so it would have been April to May it would have been 0.3 percent however in May to June month over month it was basically nothing so there's no change in inventories now here's uh, confidence uh, index that gives us the confidence in the home builders so as you can see here NAHB home builders index so in July it was at 65 and it had it slightly improved to 66 in August here for home builders. Now, stock market is up, but however, we did have some uh, volatility in the morning. Uh, we had some, and it had to do with China. So, as you recall, yesterday, uh, U.S. basically said they're going to hold back on the $250 billion of uh, goods from the tariffs, the 10% tariffs, and pretty much either eliminate it or uh, just postpone some of it until. Uh, 
uh, December 15th. So we had a couple. Uh, he was going to basically omit some of the uh, 250 billion, so probably be a lesser amount, or he may just altogether eliminate it. Now, so that set off the markets really in a good market yesterday. So the stock market had a huge uh, day yesterday, improved quite a bit. This morning, however, we get a uh, message by China saying if we impose 10% tariffs, they're going to do retaliation, uh, but made no mention of yesterday's news. So it confused the markets. Markets got really volatile overnight, and our futures, uh, stock futures, were actually in the negative. And then um, later in the day, they came out with a new statement, basically saying that we hope we can work together on a mutual benefiting deal for both companies. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of living this, but future uh, mutual beneficial uh, agreement between two, two countries. So that kind of eased the markets a bit, um, but also with the retail sales uh, coming in strong as well as uh, we got earnings reports from Walmart that came in really strong. They're very bullish on that. Uh, stock market started taking off a bit today. So we're up, that was up about 100 points right now uh, as a result of that. So it's um, liking what where we are right now, especially in terms of uh, the economy is still showing people spending money. Uh, so that's a good sign. So let's jump ahead here, see how the bond market is reacting. The bond market is reacting very favorably. We're up about 31 basis points. So we're up against, we're pushing up against the next resistance level. Uh, you know, yesterday we were up further, but uh, we did pull back a little bit. So we were up, uh, you know, we, uh, about 10 basis points. So we ended up closing 19 basis points versus you know, about 30 basis points higher than we were yesterday. So we did pull back a little bit, but we still got better pricing. Today we got better pricing today uh, as a result. So we started at that same level and went up. And again, we're pushing up against the next resistance level at the 101.904. And again, um, you know, it's looking positive for bonds. So if you're out there, I would definitely float. And then uh, here's Treasuries. We're pushing up against its uh, second resistance level. So remember, we said there's a double resistance level here. There's two floor, or not resistance, excuse me, floor of support. And it's uh, fighting its own floor of support. Right now, it's hanging at about 1.534. And just under its uh, line here at 1.544. So and if this breaks below here, it could bring us down to our all-time lows on the yields at the 1.325. So... If we get down to this level, we'll be at our all-time lows uh, for yields. So that's something we're definitely uh, going to be keeping our eyes on here. All right, so uh, that's pretty much a wrap. Uh, again, if you guys are in the market for buying or refinancing, please reach out to me. I'd love to help you guys out. I am a loan officer. love to be able to see how I can help you out. Uh, my company does uh, service all 50 states. So depending on, no matter what state you are, my, we can help you guys out. Uh, we are home to the all-in-one loan and home fund it. All-in-one loan is basically a great program for those with cash flow. Uh, want to be able to pay off their mortgage quicker, have more control over their mortgage, as well as save themselves thousands of dollars on their um, interest payments here. Home fund is a great down payment program for first-time home buyers. Could be great for people who had uh, uh, for wedding registries. Also great for those who had life-changing events in their life that need. Uh, to move on with their life and buy a new home, and this could also help them out. Now, like everybody else, we do carry jumbo loans. We carry the conventional, traditional mortgages. We uh, conventional. Uh, we carry FHA, VA, USDA, and we also have some niche loans that many do not have, like our loans for uh, specifically for investors. Uh, we have uh, loans that you know work just for them. We also have bank statement loans, which are again are for most likely for uh, self-employed bars who are you know just have a hard time qualifying with their taxes but can qualify with the bank statements showing that they do have the money to uh, qualify to be able uh, to support payments on a house and we also have loans for national for national loans so in any case uh, i'd love to hear from you guys and if you guys best way to reach me is dm me or direct message me i would love to be able to hear from you guys you guys have a great rest of your day thanks so much for watching catch you guys tomorrow bye-bye